Hey, welcome to the Biochemistry Academy. We are going to begin a serial course on molecular biology. And the first topic that we'll treat is the introduction to cells. When we are talking about cell, we are not talking about the cell in Dragon Balls. <laughs> but we are talking about the cell that is the basic unit of life. And they are the building blocks of life. Because there is one general understanding that we have over in our elementary time of school that all living things, both plants and animals, are made up of cells. And there is a common modern cell theory that we need to know that every scientist or every science student should know. And the first modern cell theory is that the cell is the smallest functional unit in all living organisms, meaning that each cell has a specific or a particular function to carry out. It is like a tiny factory that different parts work together to keep the organism alive and well-doing. And the second modern cell theory is that all living things are made up of cells, like including we humans, and both plants and the animals are made up of cell. Like for example, we humans are made up of many cells and are referred to as a multicellular organism. And there are certain organisms that are single cell living organisms or they are called unicellular organisms. An example of such organisms are the amoeba. So these cells mix up organs and organs mix up organ system and organ system that mix up the organism beautiful right let's continue now the third modern cell theory is that all cells come from other pre-existing cells for example when a cell divides it creates two new cells which then grow and divide themselves to form two other new cells and so on. Now, the process by which cells divide is called cell division. I will talk about it more in this our series of cell biology. So this cell division is occurring in your body even as you are watching this video. So this is the cell theory in a nutshell that forms the foundation of biology. Without cell, there will be no life. It was how God designed creation under the earth. Now that we have an understanding of the modern cell theory, let us dive into the fascinating a eh, the fascinating world of cells. <laughs> Looking at what is inside the cell. So first we'll talk about the nucleus, which is here. So, the nucleus is the command and the control center of the cell. It tells the cell what to do, like how to grow, what protein it should make, what lipid it should produce. So, inside the nucleus, there are thread-like structure, and these thread-like structure are called the chromatin, which are long strands of DNA. Now, the DNA is simply the instruction manual. We talked about it in our chemistry of nucleic acid. Now, this DNA they stores genetic information of the world of the cell. So, inside the nucleus, we also have a ball like structure called the nucleolus, and its function in creating ribosomal RNA to make ribosomes and the ribosomes are these little spheres you see here in the cytosol. So these ribosomes, they make protein. And the way the nucleus make protein is by sending the mRNA, which carries the, the instruction to the ribosomes and they make the protein. Now, the nucleus is surrounded by a membrane called the nuclear envelope consisting of nuclear pores, which control what goes in and out. 
So next, we'll talk about the endoplasmic reticulum, which is known as the ER. Um, there are two types of endoplasmic reticulum. The rough endoplasmic reticulum or rough ER in this region. And the second type of ER is the smooth ER, which is also known as the smooth endoplasmic reticulum around this region. So what do you think differentiates the both of them? Well, in the rough ER, it contains ribosomes, which are used to produce proteins. While in the smooth ER, it does not contain ribosomes, but it produces lipids, cholesterol, and hormones. In the rough ER, it transports proteins using vesicles, while in the smooth ER, it functions in detoxification, which means breaking down toxic substance into less or non-toxic form by making it more water-soluble. Next, we'll talk about the Golgi body. Remember, we say that the rough endoplasmic reticulum transports protein in vesicles. Now, these vesicles are transported to these Golgi bodies and the Golgi bodies then modifies the protein by adding lipids and carbohydrates to it. And it also works in folding of the protein and then exports the protein out of the cell to carry out a specific function. So looking at the diagram here, this is the rough endoplasmic reticulum, right? So it moves the protein in this vesicle to the Golgi body. Then the Golgi body then modifies the protein in this vesicle. If you see the protein here, it is folded because of the lipids and the carbohydrates that are added, then it is now exported out of the cell to carry out a specific function. Now, this vesicle that surrounds the protein, once it reaches the cell membrane, remember, or we should note that the cell membrane also, it functions in allowing certain substance in or out of the cell and it prevents other substance which may be harmful to the cell from entering the cell and this feature is what we call it is selective permeable meaning that it prevents certain substance from entering the cell and allow certain substance to enter the cell this cell membrane is composed of phospholipid bilayer. We talked about this cell membrane in one of our playlists called the membrane biochemistry. So you can check it to understand how this cell membrane works. So once this vesicle reaches the cell membrane, it fuses with the cell membrane and becomes part of it making the membrane to expand. So next, we'll talk about the mitochondria, which is around this region. And the mitochondria, it is known as the powerhouse of the cell because its job is to generate energy in the form of ATP during cellular respiration. And the mitochondria has its own DNA. Next, we'll talk about the lysosome. The lysosome contains digestive enzyme, which then helps in the digestion of food, breaking down the food. And in the white blood cells, this lysosome, they destroy pathogens, which might be harmful to the cell. Now, the next organelle that we'll talk about it is this jelly-like fluid. Now, this fluid is called 
the cytoplasm. So all the organelles we just talked about are dissolved in the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm contains solutes like salt, electrolytes, carbohydrate, lipids, and so on. We will now talk about the cytoskeleton, which aids to maintain the structure and the shape of the cell. Now, it consists of three fibers, which are the microtubule, the microfilament, and the intermediate filament. The microtubules is the largest of the three fibers. It is made up of tubulin, which is a type of protein, and it aids in structural support and in transportation the transportation of those vesicles that we talked about now the next is the microfilament which is the smallest of the three network it is made up of a protein called actin which aids in elongation and contraction enabling the cell to move and next is the intermediate filament it is in between the microtubule and the microfilament and it aids in providing mechanical support for the cell. So we have been talking about the animal cell. So we will chip in the plant cell because there are certain similarities and also differences between the animal cell and the plant cell. Because the plant cell have certain characteristics that are not found in the animal cell. Now, the first difference between the animal cell and the plant cell is that in the plant cell, there is the presence of a very large vacuole. Now, this vacuole stores water and nutrients, and it also aids to provide structural support for the cell. And another organelle that differentiates plant cell from the animal cell is the presence of chloroplast. Now, the chloroplast is green due to the presence of a pigment called chlorophyll, which is responsible for the plants to carry out photosynthesis, which help plants to make their own food in the presence of sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water. So during this photosynthesis, they produce glucose and oxygen gas. Then another is the presence of a cell wall in the plant cell. It is different from the cell membrane because both the animal cell and the plant cell they both have cell membrane. So this cell wall, which is only found in the plant cell, is to give the cell its shape because the plant cell is kind of rectangular in shape and it also used to provide structural support for the cell. Well, that's it for this video. In our coming video, we'll talk about cell cycle cell division and you understand the prokaryotic cell please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the biochemistry academy for all biochemistry courses 